Hi, welcome back to Genesis Custom Sabers. And today, it's not about lightsabers. My sons and I are gonna teach you how to do a really fun project. We're gonna make Viking shields. And these are really fun to use, too. <laughs> Come on, get Eden. Good. Okay, for this project, you're gonna need some tools. You're gonna need a saw. I used a miter saw, but you could also use a hand saw for this. Uh, you're gonna need a hammer, a staple gun, a jigsaw, a couple of screwdrivers, a pencil, and some kind of nail punch. You could even actually use a nail just to make holes in the metal of the, uh, the mixing bowl. This is a little stainless steel mixing bowl, about 1.5 quarts. You could get smaller, a dollar store or Walmart, usually about three or four bucks. And some screws and some upholstery nails. You're also gonna need uh, whatever paint you're gonna use, some white glue, which is amazing stuff, uh, some masking tape, string, a little bit of sandpaper, and probably a couple other little minor things you might need, but that's it. Okay, the first thing is the plywood that we're going to use. Now I got this plywood at a used building store for $5 for a half sheet. So two half sheets, enough to do like eight shields for 10 bucks. Uh, you can also get a two foot by two foot piece, usually at your building store for under 20 bucks. So for a small shield, you know, you're looking at about 21 inches. For a, uh, you know, a slightly larger shield, it's about almost two feet across that shield there. So a two foot by two foot should be able to do you. But thickness is important. So for someone under eight years old, I'm recommending a quarter inch plywood just because it needs to be really light, lightweight. Uh, for someone that's eight years old or older, like Tristan here, uh, you can go three eighths is a really great uh, versatile plywood. And now with plywood, you can get a uh, good one side, but you really don't need a good one side because a Viking shield needs to be rough. So you want plywood, uh, you can, it can be rough, it can be used, it can be weathered. What you don't want is MDF and you don't want particle board. Those are some things that people commonly refer to as plywood, but they're not really suitable for this. We need something with the grain of the wood nice and visible. So we're gonna get started with our 3 8 plywood. So this is the basic uh, stainless steel mixing bowl uh, available at the dollar store for $1.50. Um, and so what you wanna do, I mean, you can use this, but it looks a little too manufactured. It doesn't look like it came out of a, a Viking blacksmith shop. So. I'm going to take a, a ball peen hammer. You can use a regular hammer, but I just happen to have a ball peen hammer. And basically, you just want to smash a bunch of dents in it. I'm putting it on grass so that it has some give to it when I hit it. As you can see, I've beat it up a bit and camouflaged some of the manufacturing uh, looking there. And, and it's, uh, it's pretty good. It's going to get beat up more as it gets used. Uh, you want to preserve the flange too. Keep it as, as flat as possible. That'll need to go against your shield. Okay, for the next part, we're gonna cut out the shield. So what we're gonna do is if we want a two foot shield, um, what I've done is I've basically made a one foot piece of string with a loop at either end. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this nail in the middle and we're gonna use it to draw our circle. So I wanna make sure that my nail is more than a, you know, more than a foot away from, from the edge on either side. So I could probably get away with it being right about, right about here. It doesn't have to go very far. I loop it around one end, and then I put my pencil through the loop at the other end. And if I keep the loop close and I keep it the pencil upright, I should be able to draw perfectly round. Okay, so my bowl is about seven and a quarter inches across. So we're gonna half that. This is half of seven, three and a half. Half of a quarter is eight. So three and five eighths is about halfway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna measure three and five eighths from, from each side of that nail. And again, you wanna be, you know, you don't have to spend a whole lot of time being super, super close. And that should give me markings that allow me to center my bowl. Now a little bit further out. So my markings are outside my bowl. So what I want to do is I want to center my bowl in those markings. And I want to pencil around that. Now, I want to be very careful. That's not, that's not the line I want to cut. I want to cut about an inch, an inch in from that. So let's go, let's just say two and three quarters. So I'm going to do two and three quarters the whole way around. Okay, so I've made a small loop that allows me to place my pencil pretty much right on that mark. 
and that's the mark that I want to cut. So to make sure that I don't accidentally cut this mark, I'm going to put some lines through it just for now. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out this shield. I'm going to drill a hole through this so that I can use the jigsaw and cut that out. I'll show you how that works. I want to point out at this point too, you want to make sure that you, uh, you check underneath so you, that you're not cutting on the table or the surface that you're working on. Just take your time and stay as close to that line as you possibly can. For $7, I have a replacement jigsaw from the used building supply store, so I can get back in here. The Vikings come from Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is sanding, and this is probably the first thing that is really good for the kids to do. So uh, we can give a piece of sandpaper or I stapled some sandpaper to a piece of wood to make a sanding block. And so what we're going to do is we're going to sand the inside of our circle really good and then we're going to sand the outside. So go ahead Tristan, you can get started on some sanding. You want to try it too Aiden? Here, you take some sandpaper and you start working on the outside like here. Okay, good. Yeah, just like that. Okay, you'll notice that we've sanded around the inside uh, both both sides of the circle so that there's nothing that can really catch or make slivers uh, when you're using the shield and uh, we've also gone around the outside um, it's really important especially if you're going to leave the shield like this and just paint it up and finish it uh, you want to limit anything that's going to create slivers or, uh, or abrasions if someone gets hit in the side of the head because we are dealing with uh, young men and young shield maidens who will probably clock each other with the shield if they're using it properly um, of course, you've also got this die in the wood, and we're going to paint this side. Um, but being that the die is pretty, pretty heavy, uh, we might, might want to sand some of that out so that it's not as noticeable under our paint. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our, our handle. So I've got a piece of wood here, and uh, I've uh, cut off on my miter saw about a 30 degree angle. If you have just a hand saw, you may want to do that. And of course, we'll sand that a little bit later. What I want to do is basically, I want to measure about you know, an inch and a half from the edge of the shield about two fingers, going right right through my circle. Now I want to measure about the same distance, two fingers away, where I'm going to put my cut, and I'm going to do another one of these 30 degrees, and then we're going to come back and measure for our handle. And Dad, while we, and Dad, can you make another shield for me? I already made you a shield. We're making this one to show our people on YouTube. And then, and then the shield will be for no one? Well, you can see I've got my, my handle cut exactly the length I want. So what I want to do is I want to position that perfectly where it's going to go. And I want, let's see, about two fingers on either side, a bit more about it that way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to measure or mark where, where the circle intersects my handle. And I, I want to use these as reference points. Because what I want to do is we're going to create bit of a contour here on either side to make, make a nice grip for the handle. Okay, so I'm going to show you a trick. Basically, I want my handle contours to go almost to where these lines are. Just making the lines a little bit more noticeable. And I just pencil across there. What I'm going to do to create my handle contour is I'm actually going to use the edge of the shield. It's, it's, a, it's a rough circle, but it's pretty close. And I'm going to basically I'm going to measure it so I can draw a line that's not going to quite go, not going to quite go to my lines. You see that little curve goes to about here, to about here. That's perfect. So I want to do one on the other side. That's about the same. And then if you've got a, a scroll saw or something, you can make a really nice cut of these. I'm just going to cut them out on a jigsaw. Okay, this can be a little trickier. To, uh, whoops, as you can see, it wants to fall off. So you may want to clamp this. You definitely want to make sure you're not going to cut your little your table or whatever you're working on. I'm going to finish those up on the, the belt sander, but of course if you're sanding by hand, uh, you can do those. You might, might also want to take some knife strokes across there just to kind of round it. Um, but uh, again, I'll do that on the belt sander.
Okay, we've sanded all our grooves there on the belt sander. And of course, sanding is one great thing you can get the boys to do. Another great thing is, I'm gonna cover this and wipe this with uh, linseed oil. You could stain it if you want. Um, just linseed oil is really great for wood. So, see how that, oh, look at that. See how nice that makes that? Okay, you take this and you rub it on. Okay, just rub it. Okay, just rub it on like that. Good. Let me smell it. Okay, this is not our handle, this is a 2x4, but something very important that we want to do, this is the, the front surface, the surface that's going to show, um, and what we want to do is we want to create the impression that Viking, uh, Viking shields are made from planks. They overlaid across each other. They are rough cut planks, and so we're going to make, uh, we're going to simulate planks using this 2x4. So what I'm going to do, and you want to go with the grain, the grain in the wood goes this way. So I'm going to start around about the middle. And I'm going to go, I'm going to check with the grain. This line is kind of like a good cheater reference. And I'm going to take this flathead screwdriver and I'm basically going to, it's called scribe. I'm going to scribe a line as deep as I can all the way across. And I just want to do it once if possible. Really deep, all the way across. And then exactly on the other side of this 2x4, I want to scribe another line. So it's basically our simulated planks will be the thickness of this 2x4. Those are good scribe lines. So I'm just going to move it over, line up the line that I scribed with the 2x4, scribe another line, line that up, scribe another line. This may seem like just a silly step, but in terms of the, the result, it's going to look great. Okay, so I've got my, my line scribed and uh, I've put, placed my, my handle down I'm going to put my shield on top of my handle. I basically want my scribe lines to be right angles with my, my handle. I've done a couple of pencil lines here just to kind of give me an idea. And you can, I want to kind of center my grip right where it's going to be. And then, just uh, use my 2x4, line up the middle of the handle. And basically just very faintly, just a couple of pencil lines. What we're going to do now is use our three quarter inch screws. Now I got number four three quarter inch screws because I also wanted one quarter inch screws. Uh, you can use number six, they're a little bit bigger. Um, so basically for these screws you want, you want three quarter length. The ones that are going to go around our shield boss, we want those to be a quarter length or three eighths, whatever your plywood is. So these screws, I would prefer to use number uh, number six because these ones don't like to go in. In fact, we're gonna tap them with a hammer. Okay. So I'm gonna get a couple of screws started. I'm gonna put one right through. I'm gonna get one through all the way. And I basically wanna just kind of approximate where my distance is. These don't have to be, it's not rocket science. But one of the things you can do is you can start the screws and then you can get your child to come finish it. Okay, there. I'm in you, the video? You can twist those in. Yeah, you're in the video. Hi everyone. No, you just go ahead and see if you can do the job. Dad, I want to do it. Okay, you'll get a chance to as soon as Tristan's done. Okay, pull the trigger and I'll hold it down. Okay, stop. Perfect. Okay, with those four screws in, our handle is on and our shield is ready to paint. Okay, I've used some masking tape to mask over the handle so we don't get any paint on that. And painting is probably the most fun thing that you can get your kids to do. Um, set it up so that it's pretty foolproof and they can do it by themselves. And you kind of teach them. What we're going to do, Tristan, is we're going to do we're going to do an X shape in the white and then we're going to do some green later on. Ah. So, you can see how well it covers those green spots. Okay, I'll get you some more paint. So okay. you just paint that way? Yeah, this way, with the grain. Okay, you go ahead. Good. Do it slowly. Yeah, yeah just the X, so just do here. Good. While the paint's drying, I'm going to do this. Uh, I need to punch eight holes in this in this metal. I'm going to use this, uh, this nail punch, this nail set. Um, it's got a really fine point. You could also use an, just a nail. If you have a big, big, strong nail, you could use that, or you could use an all 
Uh, of course, you're going to need a hammer. So what I'm going to do, I um, mean, you just start with one hole. You basically want it in the center of your flange. Set this up so you can see it. Right in the center of my flange. So my screw can go through. Now this one punches a little bit of metal through, leaves me a nice hole. A um, little bit of sharp, sharp metal there, which is fine because that's going to dig into our shield. Basically then what I want to do is flip it around so that my next hole is approximately in line with that one. I want to get as close as I can, but I'm not going to take time to measure. So something like this. And then I want to basically make it crossway so I can see my line there as I, as I come over it directly. And I want to then line up where this next one's going to go. Okay, another cool thing you can do while the, uh, while the paint's drying is, of course, you can use the Shield Boss just the way it is. Most of the shields you've seen in the videos were like this, but we've just recently discovered something very cool. Uh, of course, when you're doing something with Vikings, you need, uh, you need a sense of, of reality. You need fire. So I've heated up the barbecue, and what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to take some, some olive oil, actually. I'm just going to coat... I'm just going to coat the Shield Boss with some olive oil. Not too much. It's probably actually a lot, so I'm just going to smear it in everywhere. And I want to be careful because these are sharp, remember? I just punched the holes in the backs of those. Okay, so I've got a good, good smearing of olive oil in there. And what I'm going to do is just throw that in the hottest part of the barbecue and leave it for a little while. Come back and check on it in a minute. Okay, it's been about five minutes, so we're going to check on it. As you can see, it's already turning very black and that black's going to stay and that's going to stain. Still a little bit of oil so I'm going to roll that around the, the rim, give it a bit of a spin, don't need it that high. Another couple of minutes and it'll be ready. Vikings like to use axes and shields and they take away the dragons. Okay the white paint's dried and I've drawn some lines um, with the straight edge to mark off where I want it. A mask for my second color. Um, kids are in bed right now, so I'm going to finish this myself. But the kids really do like uh, helping design the shield and decide where the colors go, looking through pictures online to kind of figure out what's going to make it theirs. You can get as creative as you want and draw out animals. Uh, just one tip, when you mask, I always let the pencil line show so that the new, new coat of paint is going to cover the pencil line. So I've got my, uh, my green here. I'm going to be careful with the kids, I might mask more, but being that I'm doing this myself, I'm just going to uh, stay within the lines. Okay, so if you're doing just a basic version and uh, you've painted your shield, you've got the handle on, um, you're ready to go. You can just bolt the shield boss onto this. You can skip to the end of the video and uh, show you where we're going to screw it in. You want to make sure you use the longer screws here and here because they'll get to go into the handle. Uh, and as long as you've sanded the edges, you're ready to go. But we're not going to stop here. We are going to apply leather around the outside and, uh, and some really cool um, bronze colored upholstery nails. Now for leather to go around the outside of the shield, you could use almost anything. Um, you could use fake leather, you could use fabric, um, you could use rawhide, you know, you could use uh, new leather. This is, uh, was a leather coat that I found at the thrift store for like a couple of bucks and I hacked it up. It's a, it's a very thin leather. It's a little bit stretchy, which is what you want, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it into strips, and you want those strips to be able to stretch. Um, so if you are, uh, I'll explain this a little later, but if you are using newer leather, you may wanna get it wet so you can mold it. Um, but for the purposes of this stuff, it's gonna stretch, it's gonna be great, it's gonna get beat up and torn up, and it's gonna look uh, really authentic. If you do uh, use leather, um, I wouldn't go anything darker than this. You want it to look kind of natural and uh, traditional to what the Vikings would have used, so nothing with a really dark stain, um, unless maybe you want to go like black or something like that, but really you can do whatever you want. But uh, I would prefer like more of a, a lighter natural natural color. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut it. Now the strips that I'm going to cut are going to be an inch and a half thick, and for reference that's what our one by two material is that we used for the, the handle on the shield. This is an inch and a half thick. Uh, I wouldn't want to go any thinner than that. You want it to be able to wrap around nicely. Uh, I have very little leather left, so I'm going to use uh, these strips that are an inch and a half thick. You might want to go with two inch thick strips if you're using a three uh, inch plywood shield. Uh, inch and a half would be great if you're using just a quarter inch plywood. But anyways, I'm going to line this up and I'm going to cut um, some strips. I'm going to use this as a straight edge. 
cut along here. Now, if you, I've got this nice cutting mat to cut on. Uh, if you don't have this, you can just cut on a, on a piece of plywood, um, maybe some of the plywood from the, from the shield project, uh, or even, if you're careful, the 2x4 that we used for spacing the uh, grooves earlier. But basically, I'm just going to put my weight on this 1x2, and I'm going to finish cutting. Fortunately, this stuff is thin and cuts really nicely. You probably want to have a nice fresh blade in your knife. So there's one of my strips. So I'm going to cut these uh, as many as I can and uh, as long as I can, and then I'll show you how we're going to use Okay, I'm ready to uh, put my leather on. Um, but before I do, I want to plan things out now for a couple of reasons. I've got very little leather, just enough to do this last shield. Um, so what I've done to kind of help the process along is I've gone around and, I don't know if you can see, I've basically made these little pencil marks right where I want my, my rivets, my, uh, my upholstery nails to go. So I'm, I'm doing 16 of them. So basically, um, I, I, do, I started here and went to the other side, then I did you know, 90 degrees crossways, and then I did 90 degrees crossways again. So that's four, and then eight, and then 16. So I've got 16. I've got, uh, I'm gonna put a nail here, here, here. Now from the other side, of course. But what I wanna do is I wanna basically start, I wanna plan out where my leather's gonna go so that my leather strips overlap right where I'm putting a nail um, so that my nails aren't kind of oddly spaced and things like that, and that'll help uh, make things are really durable. Okay, I'm ready to go. I've got my, uh, my leather strips here, and I'm basically just laying them across my knee, so they're right and handy here. Uh, I'm gonna be using a staple gun for this, and white glue. Now white glue is great, because it works great with wood. It works great with leather. Um, the nice thing about white glue, glue too is if you're using a leather that's really stiff and you wanna, you wanna soak it, dampen it in order, to, in order to stretch it and make it form to the edge a little bit, white glue will work with wet leather. It's, uh, it's excellent. So without further ado, I'm just gonna get started here. I'm gonna start right where my, uh, my number one screw is. Okay, I got my glue working. So, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm putting a, a fairly nice even bead right around, and you want to take your time with this, and again, not make a mess. And wh when we form our leather, the glue will seep around the edge, whoops, and hold the edges as well. Okay, so I've got my bead of glue. Now I'm going to start. Basically, I'm going to overlap that over my screw position and I'm going to lay this across so it doesn't get glue on it. And then I'm going to carefully, you might want to practice on a couple of other pieces of material. I'm going to put a horribly placed staple in there, but it's going to be good enough. And again, you can take these out when uh, after you've got your upholstery nails in. You want to err on the side of putting the leather on the front of the shield a little bit more than that. Basically I'm going to try not to get glue on the outside of my leather, form it, stretch it, stretch it and form it. I haven't done a long piece like this in a while, so I might actually have to staple it part way just to, just to get it to do what I want. So the rest of my strips I think are smaller, but it's a nice long one. I want to make sure that it's nice and well formed. Okay. And I've got it over my over my nail position, which was my goal. So I'm already getting some glue on the front seeping out. So I used a little too much. Um, but when my hands are clean, I can form this and get that nice. I'm gonna put my staple in just to anchor it. So now it's anchored. So now I can use my clean hand to kind of go run around and form that. I can see if there's any glue seeping out. If it is, the best thing to do if there's glue seeping out, like right there, is, uh, is leave it and then just peel it off when it's dry. Uh, while the glue's wet too, I might want to just kind of even out the leather where it's, uh, oops, without getting it on everything it out so that it's a nice kind of, kind of even bead around the shield. 
Okay, so I want to overlap a little bit of glue on the on the leather there. I'm going to use a little bit less this time. A little bit less glue. I think that's where my position was. So I'm going to overlap these pieces. And again, I'm going to lay it across the glue so that it doesn't dangle and get glue in the way. And I'm going to put a badly placed staple in there, but it's enough to get it to get the job done. Again, I'm going to stretch that around to where I want. Now, it's not going to reach all the way to the other one, so I'm going to have to make this screw position my transition point. So, put my staple in there, and then I'm going to cut it off right there, and then continue on. Okay, I've got my, uh, my nails here. I've got a hammer. I'm actually going to work on a 2x4. I've actually got two 2x4s, two so I can lay the shield flat. Now, I want to explain what we're doing here a little bit. I'm going to start start right here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to pound, we're going to push this, uh, this nail right through, right through the seam. But of course we can't really push all the way through the wood. Get, get it started. And then tap it with the nail. Now I'm tapping it through into that 2x4. So what I'm going to do is flip it over. I can see where my uh, my nail tip is. Now, because I'm working on a 2x4, all of the weight of the shield right now is resting on the rounded tip of that nail, which the rounded tips are perfect for this. So I can just pick a direction. I'm going to pound that tip over so it's not sharp and it also anchors from this side. And I'm going to go around and I'm, all my marks are on this side, even though I need to push in the nails from the other side. So I'm going to go around and I'm basically going to uh, put the nails. I'm going to start with my seams. And then in case my spacing's off, I can kind of wiggle a little bit afterwards. Okay, I've got all 16 rivets all the way around. If you find that you've got spots where the leather's overlapping, um, you can wait till the glue dries, or in this case, you can just kind of use a knife to kind of even it out a little bit. And uh, then we're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, now it's time to put our shield gloss on. Um, took some sandpaper to that and I'll just age it a little bit, probably about a 200 grit. Uh, and so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just pencil mark basically in, an inch out on either side from our hole just so I can use those little pencil marks to line up where the boss is going to go before I, before I screw it in. Now I'm going to use two different uh, types of screws. I'm going to use three quarter inch length screws. These are number four screws and I'm going to use these are just a quarter. Generally the small screws you want them to be the thickness the same length as the thickness of your plywood. Because I bought these screws when I was doing one quarter inch plywood I'm going to use them here on the three eighths although if you had three eighths inch screws that would be great. Um, the longer screws are what I used to, to mount the handle. I'm also going to drill them here and here. I don't know if you can see that here and here because those holes will go straight through into our handle. So they can be longer screws. Now what, what I found is these number four screws are really hard to start with the drill. So I'm actually going to position it and start it. Let's see what I mean? With the screwdriver. I got my two long ones in that go into the handles. Now I'm going to try to do all the short ones around until it's all screwed in. Really easy. Now I want to point out too. You just want to get these things to catch because a quarter inch isn't very long. It'd be very easy to strip these screws. So I'm actually going to tighten them with the, uh, the hand screwdriver. This is just the quickest way to get them going. We're going to teach you, no, don't hit me please, be quite careful, okay? Try again, try again, you do it.